Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna be covering everything you need to know about a malware analyst entry-level position. And we're gonna be doing it by interviewing TJ Nelson, an expert in malware who's got over a decade of experience and has hired people to do this job. Coming up. Thanks for joining and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I appreciate you stopping by. This is Simply Cyber, a channel dedicated for helping information security professionals take their career further, faster. Today we're looking at an entry-level job as part of the Choose Your Own Adventure series where we look at a bunch of different entry-level positions in the cyber security um, field. And if you're interested in this, I'll link to the playlist right there. We've covered uh, security operations analyst, pen tester, and now we're looking at malware analyst. So malware or malicious software is typically software that is written uh, for nefarious purposes um, by threat actors in order to accomplish some level task. Now, before you can really understand you know, how to stop malware or stop you know, this from executing a writer signature definition for an antivirus or a behavioral type thing uh, for an EDR solution, you really need to analyze that software, and this is where that job comes in. Today, I've had the opportunity to interview and bring to the show TJ Nelson. Now, TJ has over a decade of experience plus uh, analyzing malware. So he has seen it all, he's worked with all various levels, he's hired for the position, and he is an absolute expert on what this role is and what it isn't and what you need to know about it to see if it's what you are interested in for a professional opportunity. So, without further ado, let's get into the interview. There are two types of malware analysts. The first type is an escalations malware analyst. They typically work in a company where there's instant response or security analysts that will uh, work on a certain incident or event, and then they come across an artifact, usually a executable or a document that they need more information on. So the malware analyst will actually take that in an escalation and do analysis on that file to determine what its functionality was, what it may have done on the uh, system, and then also provide artifacts such as uh, URLs, uh, file names, hashes, that will help those incident responders and security analysts look for that infection throughout their environment. The other type of uh, malware analyst would be a collections malware analyst. They usually will work in a security vendor and they will go across of vast majority of uh, data sets out there online. So OSINT, private industry sources, and they'll try to collect as many hour pieces as possible to in extract indicators of compromise so they can put that into their feeds and help uh, secure their customers via their security appliances. Uh, they typically will do things such as uh, focus on a specific malware family, uh, and they also try to automate the process as much as possible. They try to do this at scale. Curiosity is really important to be a malware analyst. Uh, a lot of times you're working with a sample that you actually don't know about. It's a previously unknown sample to you. So you're going through the process of discovering and understanding what that sample does, what type of effect it may have on the system that it uh, is uh, probably found on, or where you discovered it from. And then you have to uh, take that and just build a wealth of knowledge based off of the many artifacts that you find uh, around that sample. Another thing that you really need to uh, know is to how to research things. Uh, really, being a good researcher makes you a great malware analyst. Oftentimes, you're going to be looking online to identify uh, different ways that people have uh, overcome obfuscation or understood a similar malware sample and you can take those uh, techniques and leverage that for your own analysis. Uh, being able to do that is really helpful. Um, some of the technical skills directly to malware analysis would be dynamic analysis, running malware in a sandbox, understanding how to observe its behavior is gonna be very helpful for you to be a malware analyst, as well as static analysis. So uh, taking the file, not running it, but understanding the properties and uh, characteristics of that file to uh, help you defend uh, your networks is a really helpful, helpful skill. So when you uh, start out as a malware analyst, uh, you are typically going to be running escalations. A lot of times you're going to be getting a direct, I need to know what's going on when this hits our systems. And then you're providing that information. As you grow and as you understand and get a wider breadth of knowledge around malware and the malware landscape, you're gonna probably be asked to start looking for 
future trends, future infections that may happen in a company environment, or things that they need to be worried about tomorrow versus today. So positions that you would probably end up in is a staff researcher position, security researcher position, where you're actually going and doing the collections and looking for those new trends, as well as uh, directing research and development for systems that will help that process. So the best part about being an entry-level malware analyst is that you get to find new things. You're actually always challenged. Uh, you're being able to discover certain things, especially if you're in a really interesting environment, you might find a new piece of malware and you may get to name that and also be the person who presents that new malware specimen or technique to the world. That's really exciting and it gives you a ability that a lot of people don't really have that in their other careers. Uh, one of the hardest things about being a malware analyst is that uh, you don't really get a lot of direction. Uh, usually you're getting a sample and you have to figure out information about it, but there's not a lot of direction in between you know, how you go from no knowledge to understanding this sample to, for a deliverable. You have to be self-motivated. You have to know and uh, how to strategize in order to get to those outcomes uh, or else you're not going to really be successful in the career. So there are a lot of uh, resources out there if you wanted to get into malware analysis, uh, YouTube videos. Really looking at the YouTube videos and seeing if there are uh, things that you can replicate on your home systems. Uh, learning how to handle malware on a system is really important. I mean, that's one of the main functionalities of the job. Also, keeping abreast of all the trends uh, would be really important to know. Know what type of malware usually targets what sectors, what the functionalities you're going to usually see for different types of variants. That's going to be really helpful for you to be successful uh, in your analysis work. For just learning how to do malware analysis, there's actually a couple uh, uh, public sources that you can go through and learn a lot of this stuff. Um, I would say that one of the best ones would be Malware Unicorns, Mal Malware 101. Uh, once you get into that and sort of get an understanding of how to an analyze malware from like a high level standpoint, you can go into some of the advanced topics like unpacking, which uh, open analysis on YouTube has a lot of videos that walks you through that process and helps you understand and build strategies around unpacking any type of malware. Uh, once you unpack that malware, you actually can get an even deeper understanding and then you can start Googling uh, different uh, articles, blogs, that will give you insight on how to do those fine-tuned reverse engineering skills that you're in, you need to go to the next level. I've definitely executed malware on my own box many a times. It just comes with the territory. But when you have it in an environment where it doesn't matter, you just burn down the VM and then you just start again, uh, that can get frustrating just because it takes a lot of time. You have to set up your VM, run your malware, and then you mess up and there's no back button for a lot of these things. So you have to redo everything from the beginning. One of the really interesting things about uh, malware are that uh, malware authors are just like you and me, and sometimes they uh, like to leave their mark. So sometimes you can see things about the malware author, such as uh, like little messages or names, or even their email addresses, they like try to you know, have a signature of some sort in their work. So you can start looking into those things and identifying this is this person. He also wrote this and this and this. And it really helps uh, for you to understand the landscape as well. It's an interesting story to tell when you're, when you're working through these things. Uh, so if you are going for a malware analysis interview, the most important thing that you need to be able to do is articulate your strategy for looking at the malware and analyzing it. Understanding the pathways between uh, doing dynamic analysis and doing static analysis and being able to demonstrate that vocally to your interviewee, I mean interviewer, will be super helpful for you to understand, for them to understand where you are from your skills standpoint. You also should be prepared to actually do analysis on a sample over a period of time out of your interview just so that they can understand that you are able to do the work. So there are a lot of opportunities to be a malware analyst. Virtually every large company will have some sort of analysis function. Sometimes you are paired into another functionality such as like instant response and malware analysis where you do sort of a little bit of both jobs. However, uh, there are opportunities with security vendors where you will just only do analysis or only do reverse engineering uh, and 
hone in on those skills. Cool. Thank you very much, TJ, uh, for taking time and sharing all that great information with us. If you are interested, I've linked below in the description some links to some tools that TJ had referenced or mentioned or that I know of that you could use to kind of uh, increase your skill level with malware analysis or just a free tool to you know check it out. You don't always have to analyze malware necessarily to understand it. You could even take a simple application uh, like a simple web server and you know look at the insides of it, you know disassemble it and look at how it uh, accesses memory and how it writes files and how it accesses the network and stuff like that. So it's not always about understanding malware. It's really about understanding how the software interacts with the computer system. So if you could take a minute, comment below. I'd really be interested in what type of opportunities that you've looked at or wanted to know more information on. Has it been malware analysis? Did the description that TJ provide map to what your expectations were or is it something else? I'd really be interested. Let's get a dialogue going in the comments below. Okay, so that does it for this week. Until next time, stay secure.